Good morning. Welcome back to Philly Youth Vote Candidate Interviews. Uh, we are uh, interviewing candidates uh, for Auditor General and uh, District 198 uh, for the uh, PA Stout State House. And um, today we have uh, Derisha K. Parker, Democratic candidate for the PA House, District 198. Uh, she's going to be interviewed by my students in my social science class at Central High School. So, uh, just wanted to remind everyone uh, to register to vote. I'll talk more about this at the after the interview, but today is the deadline to register to vote if you haven't yet. And you also wanna get that mail-in ballot out as soon as possible. Um, so you have to apply for that uh, and then receive the ballot and return it. So if you have it, return it now. If not, apply now. Most of our polling places in Philly, 77% are gonna be uh, closed and consolidated. So. Uh, you can go to the you can go to your polling place or a polling place, uh, but it might be moved and there might be long lines. Uh, so I'll come back to that after uh, the interview. And now I'm going to jump over to uh, the Google Meet here, and we say Mrs. Parker, uh, Jerisha K. Parker. Thank you very much for joining us. Oh, you're quite welcome. It was my pleasure. So um, I'm going to turn it right over to the students, and uh, they have about 10 questions for you. Okay. Okay. Hi, my name is Noon, and the first question we have for you is, can you please tell us a little of your background, education, and experience? Absolutely. Um, again, my name is um, Darisha Parker. Um, my background is a 25 years of experience in communication and public service. I'm a proud graduate of Germantown High School's MAGMIC program. I hold a bachelor's degree in communications from Bennett College, which is one of two historically black um, colleges for women. Um, I am a grassroots organizer. I um, enjoy connecting individuals from all across the city to solving any type of problem and issues that we may have. Um, one of the things that I do love is also um, public speaking. I am a mentor to many individuals in the um, Temple University chapter of Beepers, which is the Black Public Relations Society. I um, did serve as um, president of the Philadelphia chapter of the Black Public Relations Society. And I enjoy doing the, the thankless job of being a person who fills in the gap for individuals who don't have information and access for resources for some of the things that they are involved and passionate in. Thank you for sharing that. You're quite welcome. So my name is Sarah and I'm here with the second question. Um, could you please describe the responsibilities and powers of state representative and then explain why you're running for the position? That's a great question. Um, when you're thinking of an individual as far as myself who is running for the state legislator, that means we're an ask, we're a lawmaker. And when you're a lawmaker, that means we have policies that are set in place to govern the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And um, one of the main reasons why a person like myself is running is the fact that I am very, very proud that I'm gonna use my skills as a coalition builder and a connector to show how teamwork can improve lives. I've been, like I said, a long time resident of this district. I have an understanding of the issues that are important to our community in Harrisburg. And I will be a champion for, to fight for funding to our, ensure that our schools are safer, our, our communities are protected and our parks and recreations are preserved. With that mindset, what can you do to ensure that as a city and state, we're ready for round two of COVID-19 or any other illness slash disaster with some of your closures like we are currently facing? One of the things, I'm glad that you did mention it. One of the things that um, is to me that I'm thinking about as going forward and being elected is we have an office that is for emergency preparedness. And one of the line items for emergency preparedness is for natural for nat natural disasters. And one of the things that we need to do better as far as an office that already has money aligned to prepare 
every agency for preparedness is making sure individuals are prepared. That means that the handbooks that have that were issued across the city and the state for emergency preparedness on steps of what to do that is implemented. That means that our technology, we need to ensure technology has more resources so that in the individuals who don't have the access to technology are aware of what is actually going on. We actually need to do some, some drills um, to make sure that individuals are aware of what happened to what to make sure we don't have this going forward. One of the things that was very alarming to me was when this first occurred is the population, especially of um, African-American individuals that are, in, um, that are in poorer conditions of the city, the way our children and the way our seniors were handled in this whole pandemic. When you have a pandemic and the way the information was coming out, as fast as it was coming out, it wasn't a chance for individuals to actually absorb what was happening to their life. It was happening in a rapid pace that no one ever had a chance to really say, this is going to happen to me and what do I need to do to prepare? No one was prepared. And for me going forward and being elected, that will not happen under my watch. We will have the necessary skill set to make sure that everyone is prepared, that no one is caught off guard for a pandemic in our Commonwealth ever again. Thank you for your answer. You're quite welcome. Uh, Mrs. Parker, you, if you can adjust your phone so we can see your face a little bit. There it is. You don't have to be right up on it, but just because you're kind of sliding down a little bit um, okay. on the screen there, okay? Okay. There you go. Great, thanks. Go ahead, Journey. Um, so the next question is, we as Central students are lucky enough to attend a school where, where we are taught to prepare for the S S SATs and state exams. Unfortunately, other schools are not, especially in neighborhoods where there is more poverty and violence. What is your stand stance on being required to take standardized tests? Do you believe are they are necessary? Do you feel that these tests provide a racial disadvantage or advantage? And if yes, what do you su suppose as a solution? Well, the, thank, that is an excellent question. Um, and one of the things you stated, you said a standardized test. Unfortunately, when you're talking about standardized testing and when we're talking about African um, American children and the zip codes that are, po um, are poverty and it's a high level of poverty, Sadly, they aren't. They don't have the necessary um, resources as well as skill set to prepare them for a standardized test. So that also means that the tests on um, giving to these children are racially biased, and that right there is not is not fair, and it should not continuously con happen to this type of population. One of the things and the advantage is the fact that the, in the district we have two um, magnet programs as for Central as well as Girls High. I would like to see if there was a, the curriculum that is given to individuals who are um, gifted to, to share that curriculum with other students to find out how that individuals can, can be prepared all the way around so that everyone can grow up and can have a brighter future if they're given the same information. But I think what, I, what ends up happening is it's not, and that's when our in, individual children are not prepared. So one of the things that I'm proposing is the fact that in the district, um, we have a lot of abandoned warehouses um, and old buildings that are what, that I want to be repurposed to house apprenticeship programs. That means more and more young people that are not attending college would be able to invest in their skills and development. So what we need to be able to is offer individuals another option if they're not able to go to college. But we need to make sure that individuals, again, as I said, are tutored and are prepared across the board. Um, thank you. So the next question is, how important is student safety in, in the um, communities they go to school in? And how would you go about making communities safer for students who perhaps bike or walk to school? Say that last part again, you broke up. How would you 
how would you go about making communities safer for students who perhaps walk or bike to school? One of the, um, that's also a great question. One of the um, organizations that's endorsing me, Fifth Square, we were talking about how um, bike lanes and putting resources into bike lanes into certain parts of the district and how we can implement that. That would be a partnership that I would be looking at and how we can um, decrease the traffic flow to make it more safety for our children that, that are commuting back and forth to school. One of the things I'm also want to be making sure that we can also implement um, the, the above head lights and, and implementing fines that anybody that um, goes at an excessive rate in these school zones, that they would be um, they would be fined a higher rate and that, that those proceeds would go to the school for towards better safety and protection. One of what have I have noticed is the fact that individuals right now in these areas of school, everybody's heads are down that they're not paying attention because they're always on their cell phones. So I want to collectively work with Fifth Square and other partnership groups so that we can have safety zones and put funding behind that so we can do it together. Thank you, Mrs. Parker. You're quite welcome. So my name is Natasha, and my question for you is, what will you do to provide more resources for students' mental health? That's, it. That's another great question. Um, before um, and while I was, before I started working as a, a legislative assistant, I represented one of the state's um, largest African-American mental health program. And one of the things that I've implemented and made sure that I can remain connected with them. There are several um, mental health um, programs throughout the city, but they're not focused on our children. One of the things I wanna make sure is the fact that we raise funds to make sure that our children provide a safe place for mental health, um, as well as a mental health counselor. So instead of a, an, so to, in my ideal world, you not only would have your school counselor, you would also have your nurse, and you would also have a mental health um, counselor in um, the schools in the 198th district. Because I think there's a time that everything that has happened to children at once, that individuals need to know that there will be a safe place for them to speak to somebody regarding things that they're dealing with on a daily basis and also um, provide them with a um, confidential 24 hour hotline so that if, that if it's even after hours that someone in the, um, that can, can give them, you know, assistance when it's off, off hours. Um, and my next question is, what will you do to make sure Pennsylvania schools are fairly funded so Philly students can get an education equal to students living in wealthy suburbs? <laughs> wow, you hit a home run with that one. One of, one of the things that um, I'm looking at is actually partnering with um, individuals from your school and across the Commonwealth so that I think there needs to be a time that our children have a more active role when policies and legislations are passed. And I think if you understand the budget and if you understand what's happening and affecting your lives, then individual lawmakers would have a, a chance to really hear it. If an individual is not in a classroom, if an individual is not a parent, if an individual doesn't have a child in the school, then they're out of touch. So one of the things that I would like that I want to implement is to make sure that we have a student affiliation partnership. So when budgets are being passed, that we know how much money needs to be allocated for area schools so that the money um, would be allocated appropriately. Sadly, when you're starting to talk about the welfare community, the, um, the sad part about that is the, the wealthy part of the Commonwealth, they pay a higher amount of taxes than we do in Philadelphia. So that, that would definitely mean a tax increase. And that is something that I do not want to put that on as of right now, because that means that the um, unfortunate population would feel the brunt of the tax rate increase. Thank you, Ms. Parker. Um, my name is Laquinda, and our next question is, what is a fun fact about you? 
You said, what is a fun fact about me? Yes. Okay, don't laugh. I enjoy cracking gum and line dancing. So during these epidemics, you need sometimes during this pandemic just to just unwind. I really enjoy line dancing. I enjoy um, my chewing my gum because during the campaign trail, I can't do that at all because everyone's in front of me. You have a camera, you have a phone, so I can't do that. So those are the fun facts that I love to do. I love to line dance and I love chewing gum. Those are like my my downtime. I definitely can't sing. So, but those are the two things I enjoy the most, which is definitely dancing. Thank you. I love to dance too. Um, my <laughs> name is Shayla and I'm a member of our school's voter registration team along with Laquindo who just asked you the last question. Mm -hmm. And so to bring things into perspective of voting, why is it important for young people to vote? Well, it's, it's very important for young people to vote. Um, just want to make sure we have a point of clarity. There is an election every six months. Every six months, there's an election. And um, young people need to vote because this is affecting your lives. If you want legislation passed, if you want to have a voice, you can't sit on the sidelines. You have to be actively involved. You, you, you're going to school every day. You're at home every day. You're getting certain foods. You're getting certain nutrition. You should have a say so in what comes into your life, comes into your body, comes into your mind, comes into your space. And if you don't actively participate, then you're going to be on the sideline. And that's not what you want to do during this most crucial time. You have to be involved. It's a life and death situation. Thank you. You're so quite Thank you, Mrs. Parker, Drisha K. Parker. Thank you for joining us and taking the time to get involved with our students as well so that they you know, can uh, learn about you and the other candidates and uh, get out to the polls and be informed voters. Uh, do you want to say any last few words before we sign off? Yes, I just want everyone to know that I'm definitely going to be a champion to um, restore confidence in our elected officials through transparency and open communications. I'm going to be a champion to fight for resources to improve our Philadelphia schools for our children and our teachers. I'm going to part. Uh oh. Create. Okay, I'm going to partner with community members to create innovative strategies to reduce gun violence. I'm going to reduce poverty through access to quality jobs, entrepreneurship programs, and fair housing. And I'm going to champion for clean air, water, and I will champion against environmental hazards. I just want everyone, when they think of um, June the 2nd, that button number 15 is for Darisha K. Parker. Remember the park, because I am definitely for parks and healthy environment in this area <laughs> of the 198th district. Thank you so much for joining us again. So I'm gonna, um, and my students, you wanna, you wanna say thanks, go ahead. I see them saying it in the chat. Thank you, Ms. Parker. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Oh, it was great. And uh, I'm looking forward upon my election and we winning to do some partnerships with your school beyond, whether it's tutoring, whether it's championing an issue or anything. But I'm, I'm looking forward to working with you and I'm very excited. Great. Thank you so much. I'm going to jump over to our closing slide here. I'm going to talk a little bit um, just to wrap up about uh, voter registration and mail-in balloting. Mm -hmm. um, so screen should come up. Okay. Thank you again, uh, Mrs. Barker, and good luck in your campaign. Thank you. So um, if you haven't registered to vote yet, today is the deadline. So go to tinyurl.com slash PA votes 2020. Uh, get your voter registration in. Um, and if you are registered to vote, please vote by mail. You it's a two-step process. You have to vote. You have to apply for a mail-in ballot. They'll send you the mail-in ballot, and then you have to fill it out and return it. Uh, that all has to happen bef by June 2nd um, at 8 p.m. Is the, is the deadline for them to receive those ballots. Uh, so you need to get them uh, your applications in the mail and get those ballots in the mail as soon as possible. And if you have any trouble, there's a phone number down here. Call the commissioners uh, to 
sort out those issues. If you want to get involved in helping uh, other teens register to vote, join Philly Youth Vote. Vote that, John, or when we all vote.